Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to go over productivity hacks for Jupyter Notebooks so you can analyze faster. Before we get started, it's important to know the difference between two different modes. We have command mode, which is indicated by this blue bar here. And we also have edit mode, which we can see is indicated with this green bar. So edit mode, we're actually interacting with the code itself. When we are in command mode, then we are interacting with Jupyter Notebook. The importance between these two modes will become more evident as we go through different examples. To toggle between command mode and edit mode, all we have to do is hit enter for edit mode and escape for command mode. First, we're going to start with the command mode hacks. We can pull up the help window with H. This provides a list of keyboard shortcuts for command mode and for edit mode. I like to have line numbers on my Jupyter notebook. We can toggle between having line numbers on and off with shift L. This is particularly helpful, especially as we're trying to debug our code so that we can find problem lines right away based on our error message. To add a new cell above where we're currently at, we just hit A. To add a cell below where we're currently at, all we have to do is hit B. If we want to make a code cell markdown, all we have to do is press M and then it becomes markdown. If we want to make a markdown cell a code cell, all we have to do is press Y. We can highlight multiple cells at a time by holding down Shift and using either the down or up arrow keys. We can also merge these cells that are highlighted with shift M and then they become one large code block. And let's get all those cells merged with us. We can cut, copy and paste with X, C and V. If we wanted to cut this current cell, hit X. Then when we want to paste that cell, it will paste below where we're currently at. So V, we can also copy it with C and then V. Now we have a duplicate, so we might want to delete that cell. We can do that with DD and it's deleted. We also want to delete this goodbye cruel world cell as well. I actually just found out about the find and replace feature in Jupyter Notebooks, which I wish I would have known a lot earlier. Could have saved me a lot of time. All we have to do is hit F while we're in command mode. So right now we're going to find and replace code that is in our current selected cell or cells. So we only have this cell selected. If we wanted to change delete, it won't bring anything up because that cell isn't selected. We can replace in all cells. So then we see that this delete does pull up because we're looking through the entire notebook. It can also be handy to be able to use regular expressions. Or what we can do is highlight our multiple cells hit F and then find anything that we want to replace in the cells that are highlighted. Let's say we want to replace merge with combine. Replace all and then just like that, all of these merges were changed to combine. You're probably wondering, all right, we can combine cells, but how can we separate them? That's easy enough. All we have to do is control shift minus. If you're on a Mac, instead of control, it would be the command key. One thing to note is we can't be at the beginning of a line. We have to be at the end of a line or it won't work. And as you've noticed, we are actually in edit mode now. So let's move on to the edit mode hacks. So running cells, this is pretty basic stuff. But if you don't know, it's kind of important. We can run a cell with control enter. So let's run this import pandas. If we wanted to run the cell and add a new cell below, all we have to do is run the cell with Alt Enter, and then it will create a new cell below where we're currently at. If we run a cell by using Shift Enter, what it will do is run the cell and then move us to the next cell beneath. If there is no cell beneath, then it will create a new cell and move us to that cell. And actually, let's just add a bunch of new cells so we can scroll up and down. All right, if we want to get methods from an object, all we have to do is write out that object and then hit tab and it will pull up all the methods that are available to us. Something important to note is if we hadn't run this cell, it wouldn't pull up the methods because PD wouldn't actually be an object. I'll show you another example once we get to variables. We can also get tooltips for methods with shift tab and we'll pull up 
the doc string for that method. I have found this to be super helpful. That way I don't have to go search for the method, look at the arguments and how to use it. It just tells me everything right here. Having the doc string in this little window is handy, but sometimes it's more beneficial if we have a brand new window, we can do that with shift and then hit tab four times and it'll pull up this new window below our Jupyter Notebook. So we can automatically complete our code with tab. So if we start typing out a piece of a variable or code and then hit tab, it will automatically complete that for us. Note though, however, I haven't run this cell. So if I go to a new cell and start typing out part of the variable name and then hit tab, nothing will happen because I haven't run this cell yet. These cells are not aware of what is written in the cells above or below unless it's run. So if we run this and then try to autocomplete with tab, it will autocomplete for us. If we have two variable names that are similar to one another, we can still tab to autocomplete. It will just pull up different options. So then we can select which option we want from the list. We can quickly look at what directory we're in with PWD or print working directory. So actually when we want to print working directory, we can't have any comments for some reason. Just found that out. And we can see the directory that we're in here. This is important if we want to autocomplete file paths. So I have a folder with our Jupyter Notebook in it and then a file here, autocomplete. And then in diff folder, I have a CSV file called diff autocomplete. When we're reading in files, we can also autocomplete. We just start typing out part of the file name and if it's in the same directory, it will pull up the file name for us. And then we have that auto completed. If it's in a different folder, we can either pass in the full file path or we can start typing the folder name, hit tab, it will auto complete for us. And then start typing the file name, press tab and it will auto complete for us. Very nice. All right, and if we wanted to comment out some code really quick, we can hit control forward slash. And finally, this last trick is something I don't use very often, but it could be helpful, especially if you have a long code that you can't break up into multiple lines where you have to constantly scroll back and forth. That can be annoying and time consuming. So to help out a little bit with that, we can change the width of the cells to the whole width of the browser window with these two lines of code. So if we run this, now we see that the width is the entire width of the browser. And depending on how long your code is, you might not have to scroll anymore. Do you have any productivity hacks that I've missed? Please let me know down below. Hey, you're still here. Good, there is actually one more tip that I forgot to add and I noticed as I was editing. So I wanted to show you that real quick. If we scroll up here, this is one of my favorite hacks, multiple cursors. Let's say we forgot to add something at the beginning of our file names. If we're adding the same text all at the same time, instead of adding it one at a time, what we can do is hold down control and click our mouse where we want that additional cursor to appear and add in our text one at a time. We can also modify our text at the same time. Very convenient. Depending on your needs, it might be faster to hold down Alt, highlight the text that you want multiple cursors for, and then hit the left arrow if you want your cursors on the left side, or highlight your text and press the right arrow if you want your cursors on the right side. Thanks for watching.